COVID in Uganda, Dr. Henry Chobe Bosa. Allow me also to introduce the scientists who are behind us giving us information and evidence with which we are running this response. And I will start with the chair of the scientific group, Dr. Misachi Wayengera, Professor Kalebo, Dr. No Professor Noeli Nakasuja, Professor Roda Wanyenze, and Professor Pauline Biachika. Thank you very much for coming to join me in this address to the nation. Before I give my address, allow me to give appreciation. First, I would like to appreciate His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, who is the Commander-in-Chief for this COVID response, and is also the Commander-in-Chief in Uganda. I want to say a special appreciation to you for your very decisive uh, directives in this response and for your being very up to date with the response in Uganda. My second appreciation goes to the health workers who are at the front line. We appreciate you. You are doing a good job. Hang in there. We are all in this together. And lastly, allow me to appreciate the population of Uganda. You are good. You have been great. Very, very committed and united in this fight. And we want to say a big thank you to you. I will now give my statement to the people of Uganda. Uganda registered her first case of COVID-19 on Saturday, 21st March, 2020. The confirmed case was a 36-year-old Ugandan male who arrived from Dubai on Saturday, 21st March, 2020 at 2 a.m. aboard Ethiopian Airlines. As of today, the country has registered 44 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The majority of the cases were travelers returning from the United Arab Emirates, 14 of them, United Kingdom, 14, and other countries, Germany, 1, United States of America, 1, Afghanistan, 1, China, 2, However, some districts have also registered confirmed cases, including Masaka, 3, Hoima, 2, Ajumani, 1, and Iganga, 1. It's not clear if these were secondary to the ongoing active transmission. That said, all the confirmed cases have been admitted in Entebbe Grade B Hospital, Mulago National Specialized Hospital, Ajumani, and Hoima hospitals. All patients presented with mild symptoms and are improving on treatment. I would also like to reiterate that Uganda has not registered any COVID-19 related death contrary to social media posts. As a disease surveillance measure at border points, a total of 2,661 travelers have been identified for either self-quarantine or institutional quarantine since January 2020. Travelers are currently under institutional quarantine, including those from the United Arab Emirates who responded to the Ministry of Health call to report to Mulago for assessment. A total of 660 contacts to the 33 confirmed cases have been listed and are being followed up. From the time of the declaration of the outbreak of COVID-19 in China on 31st December 2019, the government of Uganda swiftly moved in to put in place proactive measures at Entebbe International Airport and at the inland border points of entry to prevent importation of the virus into the country. However, 
Due to the large number of Ugandans returning home from several countries that were closing up, COVID-19 got into the country. Many of these returning travelers integrated into the communities undetected, largely because they had no symptoms. In particular, high temperature, which we screen at the airport or at the border points of entry at that time. This in turn dictated a change in the strategy from prevention of importation to suppression of transmission. First, several countries were added onto the list of high risk category to prevent more infiltration. Ex number of returning travelers now in institutional quarantine, 1,015. Second, the contacts of all positive cases and are being followed up. To emphasize and strengthen this measure, His Excellency the President of Uganda, on the 18th March 2020, declared COVID-19 a national emergency and has seen issued 23 guidelines on preventive measures to suppress the spread of COVID-19 in Uganda. It is important to mention that the current national emergency demands a multisectorial approach, which is being coordinated by the National Task Force in the Prime Minister's office. And that this press statement restricts itself to the strategic response by the health sector. I will now go ahead and explain the lockdown. So the question is why the lockdown now? The purpose of the lockdown is to suppress transmission by reducing the number of people, any undetected yet positive case in the community. We know from evidence across other countries, Japan, South Korea, and others, that extreme social distancing is an effective intervention to interrupt transmission and keep other uninfected members of the society healthy. In other words, this measure breaks the chain of transmission. The goal is to ensure that each confirmed case infects less than one person on average. Science tells us that this level of transmission interrupts the growth of the epidemic, which is why some people commonly call, which is what some people commonly call flattening the curve. There are two routes to achieve this. Mitigation is one of them. Mitigation means slowing but not necessarily stopping the epidemic spread. This is done by isolating suspected cases and their households and social distancing the elderly and people at highest risk of serious illness. Mitigation may reduce peak health care demand while protecting those most at risk of severe disease from infection. However, this may not work in our setup with a large number of youth, 75% of the population, and overcrowding in urban areas and centers of business. Moreover, the same only works when you know the cases infected, which as per today, we cannot certainly say, with the exception of the 44 under treatment. Suppression. Suppression or basically a lockdown, which aims to reverse epidemic growth, reducing case numbers to low levels by social distancing the entire population and closing schools, universities, places of worship, markets, etc. This is necessary in part to halt secondary transmissions from those yet undetected cases in the community, but also to enable the eventual discovery as they develop symptoms. Studies show that, though extremely painful and undesirable, lockdowns work as is evidenced by the trends of the, of the pandemic in Wuhan city. 
And that is the reason why Uganda has adopted this measure. Without any lockdown or social distancing measures, the epidemic will get out of hand. Basically, what this means from the modeling so far done is that Uganda will have 18,878 cases at a 3% fatality rate, meaning we lose about 566.34 people by April 31st, 2020. This is unbearable for our already constrained health system and something had to be done immediately. And we want to appreciate His Excellency the President for taking that action promptly. So all of you may be asking, what will government do in the 14 days? I will now explain what we shall be doing in the 14 days lockdown. Number one, government must rapidly find and test suspected cases. And this will be done through two ways. First, Ministry of Health has obtained the passenger manifest of the travelers dating back to the 7th of March 2020. This manifest will be correlated with the health forms filled by the travelers and will be used to track all those who are returned during the period 7th March to 22nd March when the airport was closed. They will be screened, tested, and followed up closely under institutional setup. Two, all confirmed cases will be isolated and duly treated. Three, all the contacts of any new confirmed cases will be traced, found, tested, and duly follow-up and testing for 14 days. That was action number one. The second action, all those under institutional quarantine to weed out asymptomatic cases and institute more strict quarantine measures. So all the 1,015 people under quarantine beginning today will be tested. So our teams are out there removing samples for this procedure to start moving. Action number three, government will also strengthen the available systems to ensure that people who suddenly manifest symptoms are picked up and well managed so as to improve outcomes and or minimize deaths. I will now speak about human resources. Government has strengthened the doctors from the Uganda People's Defense Forces Directorate of Medical Services. We have Brigade, Brigadier General Dr. Stephen Kusasira, who is currently supporting the Director General of Health Services in his oversight role and Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Henry Chove, a senior consultant epidemiologist. Dr. Chove is now the new COVID-19 incident manager and is deputized by Mr. Atek Kajirita from the Ministry of Health. In addition, 82 UPDF medical personnel of different categories are supporting the response in various fields of case management, surveillance, logistics, etc. Furthermore, following approval of Cabinet, the Ministry of Health is recruiting 220 health workers of different categories to support the response, both at the centre and in the districts. Adverts were sent out and applications have been received. The interview process is commencing. In order to curb the spread of COVID-19 in the Ministry of Health is working with its partners to undertake a number of interventions, and I will now outline the interventions. 
The first is decentralized of management of COVID-19 cases. As the country starts to receive some cases up country, the ministry is decentralizing the management of cases to the districts to stop people traveling to Kampala or Entebbe for screening, testing, and treatment. People with COVID-19-like symptoms are advised to call their respective district health officers and district surveillance focal persons. The contact numbers per district is available on the Ministry of Health website. And each district has been requested to widely publicize the phone numbers so that the population is aware of them. Callers with suspected symptoms of COVID-19 will be advised to stay in their homes until a team from the district health officer's office arrives to assess them and take their sample if necessary. The suspected cases will be advised to remain in self-quarantine until lab results return. The district rapid response team using a motorcycle will collect samples and send them to Entebbe Uganda Virus Research Institute through the Ministry of Health hub system. Results will be returned to the districts within 14, 48 hours depending on the district's proximity to Kampala because time is spent during transportation of the sample to Kampala. The sample transport network. The Ministry of Health has an established and effective mobile transport network to transport samples from the laboratory via the hub system to Uganda Virus Research Institute. Hub systems are located at regional referral hospitals, general hospitals, and health center fours. All districts have a surveillance focal person and a laboratory focal person. Alerts from the various districts are directed to the surveillance focal persons or the DHOs by the village health teams or individuals. The surveillance focal person investigates the alert and if it meets the case definition, requests for sample, requests for sample removal. Once a nose and a throat swab sample is collected from an individual by a laboratory specialist, it is transported to a hub for special packaging. The specimen is then transported from the hub to Uganda Virus Research Institute, either through the Ministry of Health vehicles or the poster bus, where investigations are conducted to establish the status of the sample. Results are communicated to the origin of the sample through an online system or a phone. I will now elaborate on the emergency medical services and evacuations. An emergency medical services plan has been developed considering the requirements for COVID-19 and it is based on Uganda's population. Under this plan, a total of 310 ambulances have been deployed at both central and district level to support the COVID-19 response. It is for purposes of evacuating positive cases. Management of COVID-19 cases at the district level. COVID-19 positive cases will be managed in designated health facilities within the district or referred as per the referral guidelines. Mild and moderate cases will be managed at the district while severe and critical cases like those requiring oxygen therapy or intensive care units will be referred to the regional referral hospitals. The number of hospital beds that can be made available in public hospitals 
for COVID-19 management while allowing other regular medical services to go on concurrently is as follows. Mulago Specialized Hospital, 900 beds. Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital, 450 beds. 16 regional referral hospitals will provide 30 isolation beds each, giving a total of 480 beds. 50 general hospitals will provide 20 isolation beds each, giving a total of 1,000 beds. 164 health center fours will provide five isolation beds each, giving a total of 120 beds. Additionally, working with the private sector and the private not-for-profit, bed capacity will be increased as and when required. Regarding intensive care unit facilities, the intensive care unit facilities for critical cases will be provided at Mulago Hospital, where we have 36 adult beds and 27 pediatric beds. The Women's Hospital, which has 35 adult beds and 30 pediatric beds. And the regional referral hospitals that have 10 beds each on average, giving us a total of 480 ICU beds. Guidance on institutional quarantine. Exposed people, in this case returnees from countries that were already reporting cases of COVID-19, are subjected to quarantine. The purpose of the quarantine is to ensure that one does not expose their families, friends, and the community to the virus and risk of infection. Following Cabinet's approval of institutional quarantine on the 17th March and the setup of the Interministerial Task Force for the Management of COVID-19, several hotels and schools were identified for this purpose. And to date, 1,000 and 15 persons have been quarantined using this methodology. Persons under institutional quarantine will be followed up for 14 days. Before discharge, the following procedures will be undertaken. A, a quarantine facility where no one develops symptoms by the 14th day Samples will be taken from all inhabitants on the 15th day for testing to rule out the presence of asymptomatic persons who may be shedding the virus. If results are negative, the inhabitants will be discharged to begin another 14 days of self-isolation in their homes with follow-up by Ministry of Health officials for us to be doubly sure that there is no ongoing infection. B, a quarantine facility where one person develops symptoms will necessitate beginning the count of the 14 days from the date of evacuation of the positive case, and the cycle continues. C, a negative test when one is asymptomatic but with contact history cannot rule out preclinical or asymptomatic infection and a repeat test is required within 14 days. D. Having a negative test when one is symptomatic does not rule out COVID-19. A test should be repeated within another seven to 10 days. Movement of health workers. During the lockdown guidelines issued by His Excellency the President, health workers were classified under the essential service provider category and will continue working as before. 
Those working on the COVID-19 response are required to submit details of their vehicles, both private and facility owned, to the Under Secretary Ministry of Health to obtain a sticker to enable them move freely and at all times. Two, those providing other health care services, including those in the private and private not-for-profit facilities, are required to submit their details, including their institutional and national identity cards, to the Ministry of Works and Transport in order to obtain a sticker to allow free movement. They will be given clearly marked stickers to facilitate their movement during this lockdown period. Three, for those who use public transport, Kampala Capital City Authority will station buses in defined locations for you to board and report to your place of work and return home. The standard operating procedures will be communicated by Kampala Capital City Authority. For health workers up country, the districts, through the district health officers, are required to make transport available through the following mechanisms. Number one, for those with private vehicles, a sticker should be issued through the office of the resident district commissioner working in conjunction with the Ministry of Works and Transport. Two, for those who use public transport, the district health officer working with the resident district commissioner is required to position vehicles in designated places for health workers to board and go to work and return home. Standard operating procedures must be followed to avoid overcrowding. Management of other health emergencies during the COVID-19 outbreak. The Ministry of Health is cognizant that in spite of the active COVID-19 outbreak, the population is prone to other health emergencies and women and children are especially vulnerable. In this regard, the public is advised to do as follows. Number one, routine immunization services across the country will continue on the scheduled days at the scheduled time. Health workers must continue providing the immunization services while adhering to the standard operating procedures issued by the Ministry of Health. However, there should be mothers with their children at any given time. In case you receive more than five mothers at a given time, you must carefully separate the mothers in different rooms and ensure there is adequate spacing between them. Mothers going for immunization services should carry the child's immunization card clearly showing the date of the next visit. Such caretakers will be allowed to board the available free transport or obtain clearance from the RDCs or the RCCs to use their personal vehicles and adhere to the standard operating procedures. Parents should note that vaccines usually given to children in the school settings are temporarily suspended since the children are at home. These services will resume when the schools reopen. Number three, all parents are encouraged to take their children to the nearest health facility for vaccinations. I want to reiterate the routine immunization will continue as usual. Number four, all other services will continue as usual. Patients are free to access medical services during this time by boarding the available vehicles pre-positioned by the districts or KCCA, KCCA or use of personal vehicles after obtaining clearance. Number five, pregnant women 
are especially advised to deliver in health facilities. Kampala Capital City Authority and the district health officers have been advised to ensure pregnant women are given priority access to available vehicles prepositioned for transportation to the facilities. Number six, services for HIV and TB should continue. The differentiated service delivery model must be doubly strengthened to allow patients access their medication in a timely manner. KCCA and the district health officers are advised to facilitate clients to access transport and access health services. I'll now speak about the points of entry for cargo transportation. A total of 53 points of entry have been activated to facilitate cargo transportation between Uganda and the neighboring countries. Additionally, guidelines for cargo transportation have been developed and shared with the line authorities. Screening of all cargo transporters will be undertaken at various stop points along their travel route. Those who develop symptoms will be quarantined and samples obtained for screening. The responsible person or country will be requested to send a team of two or three people to continue the journey. In addition, those bringing cargo by air will be screened at the airport and they will only be allowed to use one hotel that has been identified and designated by the airport authorities. We request all the crew bringing in cargo to adhere to these rules. The call center. Working with partners, MTN, Airtel, Communication for Development Uganda, that is CDFU, Maristops, Nita U, the Anti-Corruption Unit, Rack Mount Limited. The Ministry of Health has increased the capacity of its call centers to handle more calls concurrently. The number of call center agents have been increased from 20 to 345 and will continue to work in three shifts for 24 hours every day. I would like to reiterate that the public is encouraged to call the Ministry of Health on 919. Again, I repeat, the public is encouraged to call the Ministry of Health on 919. Alternatively, you can call our toll-free lines on 0800-100-066 or 0800-203-033 or 0800-303-033 or WhatsApp on 0770-818-139 to enable our surveillance officers assist you. I will repeat the toll free lines. You are free to call Ministry of Health on 919. It is a toll free line. The other toll-free lines are 0800-100-066 or 0800-203-033 or 0800-303-033. Send a WhatsApp message to 0770-818-139 to enable our surveillance teams to assist you. I will now move to the issue of risk communication and allow me to introduce the commissioner responsible for this, Dr. Kavanda. Please show yourself. 
The Ministry of Health has rolled out the COVID-19 national communication campaign targeting over 42 million Ugandans to sensitize and encourage them to embrace, adopt and sustain desired behaviors and practices for the prevention and management of COVID-19. The campaign dubbed Tonsemberera supports the government's and private sector efforts in ensuring that the people become the center of action in the prevention of the spread of the virus as promoted by His Excellency the President. The Ton Semberera Keep Your Distance slogan was selected based on the key insight that social distancing is a key behavior in the fight against COVID-19. This, however, doesn't in any way downplay the role of other behaviors. Ton Semberera embodies social and physical distancing from people, but also insinuates distancing from the virus by following the actions promoted by the global COVID-19 challenge communication campaign. The private sector has been very supportive to the COVID-19 risk communication sensitization campaign. And their support includes the caller tunes that we all now have on our phones, messages on billboards, SMS, radios, television, spot messages, social media messaging, and many others, and want to appreciate them in a special way. I will now move to psychosocial support. In a bid to strengthen psychosocial support, health workers have been oriented in providing psychosocial first aid and debriefing as they care for people affected with COVID-19. This has been done in Entebbe, Naguru, and Mulago Specialized Hospital, as well as all the regional referral hospitals in the country. The training continues to be rolled down to the districts. Each of the facilities is equipped with a team of four to six psychosocial providers to provide counseling to the patients with COVID-19 within the facilities and to the health workers as well. A team of 23 providers, including psychologists from the Uganda Counseling Association, social workers, psychiatric clinical officers, and nurses from Butavika National Referral Hospital, and some non-government organizations and psychiatrists have been deployed to quarantine facilities to counsel and assess the needs of the people under quarantine. The team has also managed to link patients to different pillars for better management. Health workers are also being trained in self-care, which includes messages like, keep reasonable working hours to avoid exhaustion, helping people help themselves, remember, you are not responsible for solving all people's problems. Minimize use of alcohol, caffeine, or tobacco. Find ways to support each other. Check in with fellow helpers and have them check in with you. Talk with friends, loved ones, or other trusted people. Be sure that you know how to observe all the appropriate safety measures. Take time to rest eat and relax even for short periods take time to rest and relax before resuming work and other life duties so far the team is reaching out to people from different hotels and health facilities for counseling services research the ministry and its partners is preparing several pr protocols in order to use this epidemic to understand the virus, the disease, and how to prevent and manage within our setting 
including psychosocial and behavioral aspects of the disease. As we are all aware, this is a new virus. It is three months old and we are all learning every day. Appreciation. Lastly, I would like to, in a, spe in a special way and with deep appreciation, recognize the tireless efforts of the health workers, public, private not-for-profit, and private service providers. We understand that, you work, that the work you are doing on a daily basis is not a small task and is invaluable. You are highly appreciated for the noble work that you are doing in this fight against COVID-19. This is a difficult time, but I trust and know that you are up to the task. Keep calm, be well composed, and do your work diligently, observing all the preventive measures to ensure you too do not get infection. You are very valuable to us. The Ministry of Health will do its best to ensure personal protective equipment are provided to those in the front line and ensure patients with signs and symptoms of COVID-19 do not go to the health facilities but are duly managed within specified centers in order to avoid infecting health workers. In conclusion, I would like to appreciate the Ministerial Scientific Advisory Committee, the private sector, other government ministries, departments and agencies, the non-government organizations, civil society, the Interreligious Council of Uganda, and individual families for supporting the COVID-19 response in kind, financially and technically. The unity exhibited in this response is great, and we are all proud of all of you. The ministry continues to appeal to the general public to remain calm and practice the preventive measures. Wash your hands with soap and water, or use an alcohol-based hand wrap as frequently as possible, or at least three times a day. Maintain a social distance of at least four meters. And if you have flu-like symptoms, cover your nose and mouth with a mask. Lastly, again, to report any suspected cases of COVID-19, call the Ministry of Health toll-free lines 0800-100-066 or 0800-203-033 or 0800-303-033. You can also call the shorter toll-free code on 919. Residents of Kampala are advised to call 0800-990-0033. Zero two zero four six six zero eight one six. I'll repeat. Residents of Kampala are advised to call zero eight double zero nine nine zero 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 O zero two zero four six six zero eight one six. I thank you all for listening to me. Please stay at home and keep safe. God bless. And, uh, maybe Welcome back. Uh, while we went off, I mentioned the Prime Minister, but that actually led us into the address from the Minister of Health, giving us a comprehensive update on the COVID-19 situation in the country. It was a very deeply, uh, you know, 
detailed speech and uh, it is something really we, look, we, we really looked forward to. Mubarak, what did you pick from the minister's uh, you know, update? Because it's it's yeah. really detailed. I, I think I think the minister was actually well prepared. Yes, and she had a very rich statement. These are statements that we expect uh, competent ministers actually to be having. Absolutely, I and agree. sometimes when these other ministers are addressing us, I find I it very hard where they actually prepare their follow. statements. But this one is really very straight to the point, and you know updating us from where we started and where we are and mm. where we are headed to. Yes, sure, yes, sure. And, and one of the key issues is that uh, the government now actually, the ministry has embarked on uh, recruiting 220 health workers. Oh, yes. I think these are people that they should be maintained even yeah. after the coronavirus mm. because it's one area that, uh, you know, many experts and, you know, people who have been actually, you know, engaged in uh, health advocacy have mm. been actually so much encouraging that we must, in, you know, increase on the number of health workers that we have in the country, our health but system to have. also consider their, their Yes, their moment. Obviously, obviously. But, you know, you know, in every situation, yes. you must find a solution and alternatives to mm. such of these issues. Yes. Uh, the, the issue of... Uh, well, actually, what touched me mostly mm. is the issue of the contacts of these people who tested positive. Oh, yes. Yes, about 606 uh, people, about, you, know, yes. you know, contacts have been actually followed. And this is very important, actually, to curtail and also to suppress spreading, you mm -hmm. know, of... Uh, Flattening of the, you the know, curve. Yes, because these people actually might have moved to different family and yes. friends. You know, they visited, you know, they engaged in so many, you know, wide activities, mm. wide range of activities. And, and I think... That was really very nice for, of the Minister of Health actually to encourage, you know, following these guys. Mm. You know, the story that actually we had before of, yes. of, the, of, of the, the gentleman, of the gentleman yes. who was actually, re, you, know, re, you know, refusing to be, you know, you know, taken by the authorities. These, these are the, actually the contacts the ministry is trying to, to trace. Even if you actually, ha, you know, went you have, through a quarantine yes. and then you tested negative, yes. you saw the minister is, she's a professional doctor, by mm. the way. Very. She's telling you that even if actually you do not have symptoms mm. or even if you test negative, mm -hmm. if the ministry finds it, you know, the experts find it very fit to actually take you back mm. and also do another test after some days. And also, what also is, is key here is that the ministry, aside of, you know, combating this, uh, aside of these short-term priorities, you know, short-term uh, uh, engagements, they are also actually 